Let's have a discussion on what kind of heater you should be using for your van this year, this winter. Uh, we'll start with propane. We have uh, the buddy type heaters with propane. Then we have the wave heaters, wave three, wave six heaters, also with propane. Then we'll get into uh, wood burning, the mini cubic type uh, heaters, and then uh, diesel type heaters. First off, the buddy heaters, the propane type heaters, the buddy heater and the wave uh, heaters. Now this is all my personal opinion. It's got nothing to do with, uh, I'm not paid by anybody to make any uh, 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 claims about any kind of, this is better than that, or this is just my opinion on why this one's better than that one. But I think in everybody's, uh, if everybody knows that the uh, propane type heaters, uh, while you're burning propane, um, it produces a lot of moisture in the air and they're they're fairly you know dangerous too they have um, when they tip over or when they run out of fuel or what have you they'll they'll stop working so that's that's a good point there just don't hang anything uh, that's flammable in, in front of it like a, a cloth or a blanket or something like that that would be pretty dangerous uh, the propane heaters, they, they do um, put off a lot of uh, moisture into the air, so you'll get condensation on your windows. If you don't mind too much about cleaning that up, you're good to go there. Um, the cost of propane is probably cheaper than, uh, than others. Maybe cheaper than diesel, what have you, but we'll get into the, dif the difference in... Uh, propane, diesel, and the wood-burning uh, fuels. Now, in my opinion, uh, diesel or propane heaters are kind of the worst way to go, for, from my opinion. Uh, they do give off a nice heat, but if there is such a thing as a, a moist heat, uh, that's, what they, that's what they produce. It's, to me, it feels like a moist heat. It doesn't feel... Uh, nice and 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 dry Now it with the buddy heater when you set it up it will heat heat your unit all around front and back uh, Wherever it's sitting it'll it'll heat Behind it once the heat gets there because it actually heats the air Now with the uh, wave heaters those are a little different. That's radiant heat if you're sitting in front of it nice and warm behind the heater itself is is cool it doesn't heat the air it heats the objects that are in front of it so if you're sitting in front of it you'll get nice and warm but it won't heat anything behind it so a lot of people put those on on a the door or a cabinet behind that so that there's nothing behind it to to heat up and the pro, the buddy heater puts off a lot more water than the uh, waves put off but the wave heaters also put off uh, moisture into the air that's just the product of, of burning uh, propane you can't help that and I th think I from my knowledge anyways um, the buddy heater will put one like 350 milli milliliters of moisture into the air every hour so that's that's a lot of water going into the air and then your breathing also puts a lot of moisture into the air now we can you can look that up to find out exactly how much moisture is going into the air every hour uh, with a buddy heater and they have different uh, BTU ratings so uh, the more BTU ratings the higher the moisture that it's put into the air next would be in my opinion is the uh, wood burning stoves like um, for example, the Cubic Mini. Uh, small little uh, wood burning stoves. Um, you can put them in your unit. You need to make a hole in your roof uh, to, to vent. 
uh, nice dry air. Uh, the only problem with uh, the wood burning stoves is um, you have to have a lot of wood stored up, saved somewhere, uh, you know, stored wood so that you can start your fires. Uh, that's another problem is starting your fire. If you sleep with no, uh, nothing burning during the night, you get up in the morning, it's cold, you have to get a fire going. If you want to keep a fire burning in the, uh, in the little burner all night long, well, you have to get up every couple of hours to keep it stoked and, and keep uh, wood in there. Nice dry heat though, uh, and it's nice to have a little fireplace, the flickering of the light and it's, uh, of the flame looks nice. Uh, there's no, nothing, it's because it's dry heat, there is no moisture going to be put into the air, there's no condensation on the windows. All you have to worry about is the um, smoke going up the stack and if you put the stack high enough there won't even be any smoke coming out of the top but you've always got that chimney uh, sticking out your roof and you have to worry about uh, leakage water leakage and stuff when it rains and what have you um, wood <clears throat> I guess you can burn any kind of wood you want in it uh, anything that's got oil based or anything I wouldn't use you have to get nice dry wood I suppose you could use the the wood that you could buy at um, at you know the stores like Walmart and what have you Canadian Tire they have wood that you can burn in your little wood burning stove as far as cost goes I think those cost more than the propane type heaters Propane, uh, the, I forgot to mention that the buddy heater is probably the cheapest way to go. A couple hundred dollars gets you a, um, a buddy heater. Uh, a lot more money for the wave type uh, propane heaters and probably the same kind of price for the, um, the cubic mini um, wood burning stoves. Then we can get into diesel heating. In my personal opinion, the diesel heater is the way to go for your unit. You have to have two holes in your floor, for one for exhaust, one for intake, uh, nice uh, fresh air intake to burn, and the exhaust going out. Now what that does is it circulates, that's the only two holes that go in your floor. Where it's getting the air to blow into your unit because there's a fan going all the time once it's um, blowing um, th that air is circulation air it sucks it in one end and blows it out the other and it's close to 200 degrees or if not more coming out of the other end uh, out of the, uh, uh, the, uh, the outlet end the intake is just sucking in air from um, inside your unit nice dry heat um, the cost of uh, the uh, diesel heaters is probably, I would say, in my opinion, you've got to look this up, is probably the cheapest heater of the three, uh, of, the, of the four. Um, the diesel heaters are, are very cheap. Now, if you're going with the Chinese diesel heater I'm talking about, that's the cheapest way to go. Um, my bias opinion on diesel heaters is go with the Chinese diesel heater and some people are saying inferior uh, 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 parts and pieces on it, inferior metals and what have you. Yes, uh, inferior compared to the S-Bar, but I can buy five Chinese diesel heaters for the price of one S-Bar heater. And even the parts are a lot less, uh, a lot less expensive to buy also. Now the uh, Chinese diesel heater, <coughs> I'm sitting on my bed right now. It's underneath my bed along with the pump and I do not hear the pump at all because I have it hanging but I don't have it bolted to anything. If you mount it to something then the pump noise is going to be radiated from the uh, thing that you have it mounted to. If you mount it on the wall, a, a wooden wall, a, 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 the, the metal wall is going to ping a, a lot louder than if you just hang it by an elastic an elastic thing and hang it at a 45 degree angle. The reason you want to have it at a 45 rather than straight up or flat is because of the bubbles. 
it needs to have bubbles in the fuel line in order for it to work right. Some say no. In my opinion, this is all my opinion of course, in my opinion, and I've seen a lot of other people saying the bubbles need to be there. Um, now when the pump pumps, it pumps a precise amount of fuel every single pump and that's 0 0.02 liters of fuel every pump. Now if you have it set at, if you're using the temperature gauge on it, you can do uh, two ways to run it. You can run it by temperature, so whatever you set the temperature at, it'll get to that temperature and then maintain that temperature, or it'll just slow down and pump very, very slowly. <coughs> Excuse me. It'll pump very slowly until you turn it off. Now there, you can program it to turn itself on and off twice a day two times so you can have it come on in the morning you can have it come on in the morning when you be, just before you wake up and have it uh, run as long as you want it to and turn off at a certain time and then again another time that day like in the evening if it's too cold during the day you can leave it run all day all night you can uh, I ran mine <coughs> Excuse me. Or you can set it for the amount of pumps per second. I think it goes as low as 2, 2.2, 2.5 pumps per second, up to 5.5 pumps per second on a 5,000 kilowatt or a 5,000, um, the Chinese diesel heater 5,000. And 5.5 pumps per second you can figure out exactly how much fuel you're burning. So let's say it's you're, you're burning at, at two pumps per second. So 0 0.02 milliliters per pump times two, that's 0 0.04 milliliters every second times 60 times 60. That'll give you how much fuel you're burning in one hour. So you can tell exactly how much fuel you're burning in one hour and it's got dry heat the best dry heat there is there's no moisture in the air whatsoever your windows do not get fogged up at all there's no condensation um, some people complain that it never turns off well your buddy heater never turns off until you turn it off the waves stay on as long as it you can until it until you turn it off and the wood burning stove will run out of uh, wood to burn and then it turns off so the diesel heater at least you can program it a couple of times to turn off and on per day or you can leave it on all night long leave it run 24 hours whatever however cold you are so now as far as parts go I have the this is the uh, controller that goes on the wall and it lights up and t you can program it in here on uh, how what the temperature you'd like it to be or how many pumps you'd like it to be so that's controller that goes on the wall once it sense, senses the temperature there's a little hole in there which senses senses the temperature in the air and that turns it off or, or, or shuts it kind of down a little more or keeps it running at full speed until it gets to that temperature now if you if you do happen to get errors error messages uh, most people are familiar with the error 6, which is usually a fan problem, or an error 3, which is a glow plug problem. I have an extra glow plug here. Now, glow plug, they come with a little cap, protection cap. These are very sensitive uh, uh, to breakage, and those when they go into the diesel heater well first of all when you want to take it out or put it back in you should have this wrench you should purchase this wrench as you can see it's got a hole at the top where you would stick something to to tighten it and it's got a slot cut out of it now this wrench goes over the wires like so and then onto the nut and then you can tighten tighten that in so that's a must. You don't want to take this uh, glow plug in and out 
with a uh, needle nose pliers. You'll break these wires off and then <laughs> you're going to need another glow plug. Make sure that if you've got the Chinese diesel heater one, it's got this end. They have different ends on them. It's got to have this end on there. So this is a glow plug and at one time you could buy two of these for $18 and I think they're now 20 some even 20 you can find them cheaper wherever you look but I've seen them on uh, Amazon for like 20 20 some dollars for one now when you put this in there is a mystifying screen that goes the the uh, glow plug goes into this little screen here now this screen has got to be clean got to be able to see through the little holes on it if this gets plugged up, your diesel heater will not work, and you'll get an error through error an error message saying there's no uh, no ignition. So that's probably an error three also. That's what will happen there. That goes in before you put the the um, glow plug in, and then you should get this tool here, or you can use a pencil. A pencil happens to be the same uh, round to fit in the hole. But this tool here, which you can purchase, goes on like this, and then you would push it into the hole that where the uh, glow plug came out of. So that goes in there like so. Now, this has to be deep enough in the hole. There is another tiny little hole on the outside, the size of a match, uh, a, a wooden match hole. This... Uh, mystifier has to go in past that little hole so that air can go in that little hole for combustion to burn so that's and air is sucked in there and blown on here on the little mystifier to make the uh, diesel a mist and then it can burn properly so there's that tool to put it in they say you can take it out with this tool but no it it goes on pretty easy and it comes off so you can't pull it out of the hole what you need to get it out of the hole is some little hook tiny little hook or a bolt like this and i think this is an eight or nine millimeter bolt and you'd stick that in and turn it like so and then you can pull it out and that's what I would use to get mine in or out with that. And then you put it in, put the glow plug in with this wrench with the slot in it. And that's a nine millimeter uh, wrench. I'm not quite too sure on what size this is, but big enough to fit in the mystifier screen. Now, when you take the thing apart, I've taken mine apart completely. There's nine bolts and the whole thing's apart. The reason I took mine apart is I seen on YouTube about soot buildup. And I was worried about when it's just pumping slow, that's when they say you get soot buildup. So I took it completely apart just to see if I had soot. And I had run it for two and a half winters before I decided i go got to open this up to see. So I, nine bolts, she's all opened up. Knocked it on the table, absolutely no soot whatsoever. So I, I don't know how some people would get soot build up. I've, I've had one friend that used to run his diesel heater for 24 hours a day because he had a little dog and he didn't want it to get too cool in the, in the, in the van. So that's what he, he did. He ran it for 24 hours a day. Now, there again, 24 hours a day on a 10 liter tank, I think a, a few days and 10 liters is gone. So it costs sixteen dollars to fill up a 10 liter tank um a few days so i would say three times a month you would fill that up so 40 50 dollars a month to to burn that thing 24 hours a day that's next to nothing now when you put it back together you should replace the two uh these two here there's two of them gaskets that go on there you might be able to save the gasket that when you're taking it apart just be careful when you take it apart that if you crack these things and this one especially this one will probably crack because of how it's 
comes apart and goes in. And this one here goes on the inside part. But you don't. You uh, want to replace these. You can get them in the in the, the cardboard type here that I have, or you can get the metal, the metal ones. Now, if you don't have that and you want to use something else, which I have used, is uh, gasket maker. This happens to be red high temp uh, RTV 100% silicone gasket maker and sealant. This works perfectly, and that's what I have on my unit now. My, now because I took it apart to see if there was any soot buildup in. So I used this, but I had ordered uh, gaskets, I ordered uh, glow plugs, I ordered the two wrenches, or one to put in and one to take out the glow plug, and I ordered the little mystifying screens to have extra. I do have an extra pump now, I wouldn't personally, my opinion, I wouldn't go for one of those silent pumps, they say. They're not silent. They're not any more silent than this. Uh, if you're going to talk about a couple of decibels, uh, a little more silent, no. Um, hang, your, hang your pump from an elastic band or an elastic cord of some sort, which mine is right under my bed at my foot end under my head end is where the heater is and the fan makes more noise than uh, the pump does even when the even when the it's running at very slow two pumps per second if that um, I can barely hear the fan and I can't hear the pump at all I never hear the pump ever so and it's I think it's because it's hanging and not mounted in a box even if you mount it in a box and fill it full of stuff to absorb the sound it, you you can't make it totally quiet but like i said when you hang it and hang it by the uh, 45 degrees oh i forgot to mention about the 45 degrees thing if it's laying flat there's always cavitation when pumps pump fluid so when you got it sideways it's got cavitation which creates more bubbles and the bubbles build up at the end and m won't flow properly into the into the heater if you have it straight up and down, less cavitation, yes, but you do need cavitation in order for it to work properly. That's why even the book, they, the book, they recommend that you do hold it at a 45 degree. Now, even in the book here, they say that uh, errors, for example, you'll get error one which um, is under voltage. Error one is, not, it's got not enough voltage. You're under, under 12 point something volts. Always use it connected directly to your batteries. There's a fuse on it. Connect it directly to your battery as opposed to going through something else, like through a, um, like a long wire and th through something else. Error two is uh, over voltage problems. Error three is uh, the igniter plug is like the, the glow plug is not working correctly. Error four is the uh, the pump. The pump itself is not working. Error five is uh, the you've got an overheating problem. It, you've got uh, the end the where it draws in air at the at the end is like plugged or something in the way of it, and putting stuff around the sides of it is no problem. It's when it sucks in air, it can't suck enough air to blow air over the the unit and you'll get uh, too hot and the little sensor on the unit itself will it's too hot and it'll shut down error six is uh, a, a motor pr problem which is the fan problem error seven is a break in the fuel line there's not enough fuel getting to your uh, to your glow plug to your uh, unit to burn so you might have a leak in the in the in the line somewhere Error eight is the flame ignition, like the flame just went out and there's no, no no more burning. So that's as high as it goes. Error nine and error ten you'll get. Um, I can't remember what error nine is off the top of my head. Uh, I said error seven and error eight. Error nine, error ten. I know error ten. A lot of people think it's when you when you don't get a, a start 
twice in a row, it'll give you an error 10. And from my personal, uh, when I've checked with other people, error 10 means it doesn't, it can't figure out what the problem is. It has a problem, but uh, it doesn't know what it is. Now I think I mentioned that error 10 kind of means that there it, it can't figure out what the problem is. It, it it's, could be just about anything. So don't don't uh, don't think that error 10 means that it um, it it's one thing when it when you th somebody tells you oh error 10 means your unit didn't start twice in a row or something. That's not really what it is. It could be, but it it's doesn't it can't figure out what it is. So. Um, it gives you an error 10. Now you can program it to come off and on twice a day, but you can also get into the programming of the unit to set other things. Like uh, the, the admin password, I think it starts with uh, 1688 is the admin password or 9009. So if you try uh, one of those you know, to get in, you can, you can get into the um, programming of it. A lot of them come with this kind of key fob. Now the, the controller that is on the wall the controller that's on the wall comes in all different sizes and shapes and, and how to program them. There's different um, uh, symbols on there so that you'll have to figure out what those are yourself. There's so many of them now that uh, I can't tell you that's how this one works. But they, a lot of them come with a key fob, and it's mine has an off and an on, and then a plus and a minus, so I can uh, turn up the temperature or turn down the temperature, and turn it on, turn it off when I like. Now a lot of them don't come like this either; they come with just an on-off button. Um, some controllers on the wall just have a, a knob to turn up and down, as opposed to pressing buttons to make it turn to, to make it do what you want now if you get it I happen to have two key fobs um, so I can this one works with my unit now but if you get another key fob and you try to use it it won't work so you have to go through the programming of it to tell it that that particular key fob is going to work with that, that unit at that time and what else? The um, fuel line. This is a hard, kind of a rigid fuel line. That's the stuff you want. Some of them come with a very flexible, you can squeeze it. It's almost like a fish aquarium uh, fuel line. So they say, that I wouldn't get that kind of, fish, of uh, tubing. If you do get that kind of tubing, go and find yourself some of this rigid stuff because that tubing can kink or squeeze somewhere and you won't get the proper fuel going through it and I don't even know if it's recommended for uh, diesel fuel anyways and by the way if you do get a diesel heater please don't run anything in it except uh, diesel if you're trying to save some money and burn something else uh, don't do it I mean yeah. Diesel is cheap enough already that you don't have to um, burn anything in there except diesel fuel anyways. And some people uh, will try to burn like vegetable kind of oils. Yes, they will work, but you will you will get problems burning other other types of, of fuel in there. So just just run diesel fuel. Now you can maybe once every winter, you can run um, a small portion of like a, f a few liters of diesel along with 50% of that can be kerosene. And kerosene burns a little hotter so you can you can burn up any soot or whatever that is in your unit. That'll Don't just use the kerosene only. The reason being is kerosene doesn't have any lubrication in it where diesel has lubrication in it. It's got oil. You can burn gasoline in these things and sometimes a diesel heater will be sold as a gasoline burning unit. But again, I think that's just the Chinese lying to you. Uh, it's probably just a diesel heater. Now they have a 2000 
uh, unit, a 5,000 unit, and an 8,000 unit. The 2,000 unit is physically smaller than a 5 and an 8. It's physically smaller. A 5,000 unit and an 8,000 unit, I think they're cheating you. They're exactly the same unit. On the 8,000, they just bump up the pump. They program it to bump up the pumps per second, and they bump up the fuel or uh, the uh, fan speeds uh, so that everything you think you're getting 8,000 when it's actually a 5,000 just bumped up and they're charging you more money. In my opinion, the one you really want to get is a 5,000. Even if you got a small unit and you think, well, that's going to be too heat, too much heat, well, turn it off and on more. Uh, for what you get, a 5,000 should work perfectly. What else should we go through here? I've done everything that I think I could think of. And if you do have any questions about any of the heaters, especially the diesel heater, put it in the comments below. I'll answer them all the best of, that I can. Uh, I did put out a couple of videos on the Air 3 code, all about the uh, glow plug problems. Now, uh, I forget what this is made out of, porcelain? or uh, ceramic, I think it's ceramic, but it's very sensitive. Even when you're putting it in and taking it out, you gotta be very careful that you don't bump this because uh, that'll crack it. And these wires here, when you go to take it out and put it in, uh, they can break off very easily. So you gotta be very, very careful. And then this rubber part here, it goes down over the cap and covers everything up on the heater when you got it done. So put your comments and your questions in the comment below and I'll answer all your questions the best I can to my personal opinion on the subject. I I did own a buddy heater and uh, um, like I said the propane I didn't like the uh, I had to, I did have a 20 pound propane bottle behind the driver's seat, which I had, uh, the passenger seat, and I turned the passenger seat around so that the bottle was hidden all the time behind there. And I had a long cord, and I had the the buddy heater just uh, in front here. I did have a Martin heater, which is a lot like the buddy heater, shaped the same, works the same, but it had the capability of turning itself on and off. Uh, you would turn it up and leave it that hot until it got to nice temperature in your vehicle. Then you would turn it till it just goes off. Now it will maintain at two degrees temperature off and on. It'll turn itself on when it gets a little cool. It'll turn itself off when it gets too warm and it'll maintain that heat for you. But like I said, when you're sitting in front of it or when, you, when it gets warm, the, the air just feels moist. I don't know how to explain, explain heat that has moisture, but it does. You can feel the moisture in the air and that you'll see on your windows. Now, if you're heating a garage or something else, that's a little different. I'm, I'm talking about uh, an RV unit. Uh, wood burning stove or the, the Wave 3 is the same way. It burns a little differently. It it has a, a chemical reaction with the uh, uh, with the mat on there produces uh, heat but it does produce moisture so like I said if you have any questions or if you need help with your diesel heater uh, installations or um, uh, I might not be able to crawl underneath the vehicles and help you that way but I can give you my advice I can stand over your shoulder and watch you and make sure you're doing it right whatever you whatever it takes if you're in we're in the same area i'm in vancouver so uh, if you're here and you need help with your diesel heater let me know i can help you with that so put your comments in the comment section below if you have any or any questions i'll be happy to answer them for you and uh i guess that's about all there is to it i personally would like everyone to get the chinese diesel heater for the cost they're just over $200 and if you look around you can get them for under $200 Canadian and free shipping it all depends on where you get it from you can get them shipped from Canada from the US 
or right from China. It all depends. I have one on my link that ships from Canada. If you want that link, I can put it, give it to you. That's a, it's a, at this moment in time on December the 21st, 20th or 20th, something like that, it's uh, $206. So that's not a bad price. And then if you want extra parts and pieces, I do have some parts. Would like to keep those for myself, but I can tell you where to get them. I can put, give you links for those. And if you need help taking them apart and fixing and doing whatever have you, let me know in the comments below and we'll go from there guys.